Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper. I know it's been a while since my last video, but we have been very busy in the copper shop producing a lot of work the past couple of months. Mostly summer's been just nonstop builds and um, pausing to, to do filming is just something I don't have the capacity for, but I thought it was high time I paused and did another video. So uh, today I'm gonna do something I think I did a long time ago, but I'm gonna do it again um, as a refresher slash, you know, maybe there's a step here that um, is gonna be helpful that I may have not done in the past. But what we're gonna be talking about today is how to make sure you cut a base circle to match your uh, your body um, appropriately. And even though there are lots of different mathematical equations you can do for this, there's a standard one I was taught that um, the master tinsmith I learned under does, um, all the other um, men I know in the trade also do the same measurements, give or take, you know, a 16th. So it's going to be a measurement that you should be able to use pretty much as a standard measurement, no matter the size of the piece that you are making. So without further ado, we're gonna go right to how to cut a circle, measure and cut a circle to match any base of a build that you're doing. So here's the bottom of a large piece. It's one of many we are working on, um, but uh, they're all standard size and yet I still like to double check the pattern after I've built it. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I have two seams, which makes it really easy, is to go across, straight across. And we're right, we're gonna go from the outer angle, uh, the, other, the outer edge of the burr, because I'm doing a crimp seam. Even if it was a lap seam, the math's gonna be the same. You go to the very edge of your piece, and then the same over here. So this shows me a little over 14, this isn't quite round, but then I like to do a couple different measurements straight across just to check my math. So there's a little under 14. So still, I'm going to say we're at like 14. See, this is way under. <clears throat> so, you know, once I get it going, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure it's as round as possible when I measure. We're still looking a little under 14, but over here, we're right at 14. Over here... I'm at 14. So 14 inches. Now you're going to add, no matter what kind of bottom seam you're doing, you're going to add one eighth to both sides of the circumference, which means that I would have like an eighth out here and an eighth opposite. So in total, 14 and a quarter is my final measurement because I'm 14 plus an eighth and an eighth. Now, if it was three inches, it'd be, as my final diameter, it'd be three and a quarter. If it was four and a half, I'd cut a circle that's four and, and three quarters. If it was, I don't know, 10 and an eighth, you'd cut 10 and three eighths. So you get the math. Um, just add basically a quarter inch to your final diameter from the outside of your piece, whatever that those sides look like. And then you can cut your uh, your blank for your bottom. So here's a really big blank that um, will match this. Now, because I know I'm gonna cut four and a quarter, or I'm sorry, 14 and a quarter, I'm going to cut a blank that's bigger than that. Otherwise, there's not any material to cut off and you end up with a piece that's uh, not big enough. So, I cut a piece that is 15 inches by 15 inches, which gives me kind of a bit of a waste, more than I really need, but it does allow me some wiggle room on the circle cutter or even when I'm trace, if you were tracing out this with a compass by hand. And then, because I do have a circle cutter, but um, I'm gonna show you how to do this if you did not have one too. I am putting my center point here for the circle cutter at seven and a half. Now, which is half of 15. If I did not have, let's say I don't have a, a circle cutter, what you would do is you would mark seven and a half for my 15 or your middle point of your blank right there, okay? And then you go the other way, right in the middle. 
or wait, hold on. I'm doing this off to the side, so I'm backwards. Seven and a half is right here. I'm using a dry erase because it will come off without leaving a, a mark, you know, on, on the copper. It polishes right off. Um, you can use dry erase or wet erase. So now I have a center point, which if I was going to use a compass, I would be able to stick my point here and draw out my 14 and a quarter circle by hand and then cut it out by hand. But we're going to go to the circle cutters for this one so that you can see the finished piece go through the circle cutters because it's satisfying. All right. This piece is ginormous, so we have to make some accommodations I don't normally make. But this is set to cut out 14. And a quarter. It's so big, and this is 20 ounce, so it's quite thick. And I'm doing this. All right, this is not going to work. I'm going to have to do it over here just so I can get to the machine. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna go right to that center point. So just to show you, the center point is matched up to my center here. And then this is all down and this is gonna spin and I should have a circle without any issues. And I've learned, we have learned that this piece is so big, we need to do that. Otherwise, it catches. Such thick copper. But I now have my blank. So if you go back over to our piece here and I take my blank and set it and I'll flip it this way. If I were to burr it, once it's round, whoo, this is 20 ounce copper, but you can see there's the excess here and it's not round, but when I put it on, it will be. But there's excess. A 20 ounce actually takes more to spin, to turn up. I have to account for the radius, the turn radius. But there's extra material, oh boy, that I will then burr up to overlap that crimp seam. So there you have it. There's how to figure out your base for the bottom of any piece you're making, whether it's straight sided or it's cone or anything like that. Um, just add an eighth inch to both sides or a better way to remember it is whatever the final uh, outside edge of your bottom is at a quarter inch in order to provide an eighth inch burr for your crimp seam or even your lap seam on the bottom of your piece. If you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments. It takes me a really long time to get to the comments. I'm just one person <laughs> and there's always technical questions and stuff. So it takes me a while to inch through them in between everything else, but I will um, eventually, even if it takes me months, get back to you. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to share this channel. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to find me on Facebook and Instagram under House Copper or pick up a, copper, a, a copy of Copper, Iron and Clay wherever books are sold. Thank you again for joining me here in the House Copper Shop, and I will see you next time.